First thing you're going to notice about these calculators is the difference in the display. So, for example, if I put in whatever, 12 times 15 on this one, and 12 times 15 on this one, you can see the difference in font size. I prefer this. I'm not a young man anymore, so uh, it's a little helpful. And also the result, larger font. With regards to build quality, the EX feels better built. The ES is totally acceptable. In a vacuum, the keyboard feel on the ES might be just a slightly better, but because of the overall build quality, quality feeling lower, it's a little more plasticky when you use the machine. So this feels better built. This feels a little more like there's cost engineering going on, but I do like the keyboard feel itself on this. The ES actually sits flat, so when you type on it, it doesn't rock from side to side. This one does, it's, and it's annoying. I think it's in part due to the fact that this has a curved shape. The processor in the EX is way quicker than in the ES. In fact, the ES is the exact same in the second edition as it was in the first edition. I ran a couple benchmarks or whatever. Alright, let's start with this equation and we will solve each of these. The solve is in a slightly different location. Let's start with a guess of 1. And on this calculator you actually have to e hit equal and then you have to know to hit it again, which is a little goofy. Alright, so hit equal. The EX was almost instant and then the ES came later. If you type in 140 over 111 and hit equal, both calculators simplify the fraction initially. When you hit the S to D button, which I guess means symbolic to decimal, I've never really been sure, you can see the difference. On the ES you get this neat repeating symbol and on the EX you do not have that. And it works the other way around. If you put in the one point and then I have to do the repeating symbol 261 and hit equal it'll convert it into a fraction. The EX does not have that feature. Another thing that the ES offers that the EX does not is the ability to do remainder division or modulus so if I had 47 and I want to divide it by 6 but I want the remainder I don't use this division I use this one up here division with remainder divide that by 6 and we get 7 with a remainder of 5 that's pretty slick I like that next on the ES you also have a greatest common divisor GCD so we can do GCD of 2310 comma is shifted which I don't love that it is on both calculators on the sharp it's not hit equal 105 is the greatest common divisor and it also has least common multiple if we do least common multiple of those same two numbers thirty thousand and thirty. Now this does show you something that the ES does not have which is a way to separate the digits. Uh, so I wish that there was a little space here. I'll show you. If I do a, let's just do a random calculation on this. Notice the answer on the EX has a little space in between each set of three digits. So I like on the ES that the log function, log base 10, is not shifted. It's just, it's got its own dedicated key. Especially for high school students, it makes it easier. Here's log base 10, here's natural log, and then if you have a different base log, it's right here and has a dedicated key. I like that. On the EX, it took me a while to even find it. Um, 
you know, sure, you can hit this and use base 10, but it's hidden over here somewhere. I'm actually, okay, the ES also has a floor function, so give me the integer that's less than me, and where this is interesting is if you have like a negative number in particular. So if we had like negative pi, the floor of negative pi is negative 4. I'd next like to show you how these differ in terms of handling the calc function. I believe the ES has a better, more intuitive approach. And here's our equations. I've entered it on each of the calculators. And I want to calculate it meaning I want to plug in an x value. So I hit calc and on the ES I'm going to do 27. So I type 27 and I hit equals and I get my answer. On the EX I type in 27 for my x value and I hit equal and I get 27. That's not the answer. You have to hit equal again and then you get the answer with some nice digit separators. That throws some students. It's just not intuitive. When you're typing X's on the EX, you have a dedicated X key. I like that. For as often as X comes up, it's nice to have a dedicated key. I would have gladly given up hyperbolic, which I never have used. Okay, for this next example, let's look at an expression with two different variables. So we have an x and we have an a in each of these. On the es, if you want to calculate, hit calc, and let's say x was 10 and a was 20. So I type 10 equal 20 equal and then I get my answer. I like that. That feels very intuitive to me. On the ex, when you hit calc, and you put a 10 in for the x, and you put a 20 in for the A, it doesn't solve. You have to hit equal yet again. So there's this extra step in there, and I understand why they did. I'll show you that in the next little example. But I prefer the ES. It feels intuitive to me. Okay, in this next example, we have an equation with two different variables, A and B. And we want to solve this for B. So on the EX, I know normally I've been doing the ES first, but on the EX you go to solve, shift solve, and you give it, let's say we knew that A was 10. So we put in 10 for A, hit equal, and then it says B equal and it gives a value. Well that's the last value it had for B. So let's give it a starting guess. and Let's say that it's 1. That's our guess. When you hit equal you're just telling it that's my guess and then you hit equal again to tell it that I want to solve for that particular variable. So There's our answer. Okay, on the ES to solve the same equation for B you have to tell it what to solve for. It doesn't let you dynamically pick it like it does on the EX. So I have to do comma alpha B. That can throw you for a loop. If you don't do that you will get an error and you'll wonder what's wrong. So, and then I need to do sh shift solve. It asks me for my A value. I'm going to put in 10 and hit equal. And give it a guess for B. Picks longer, but gets the answer. Alright, let's look at solving a quadratic on these calculators. First thing we need to do is go into the mode. We're going to do an equation and we're going to do type 3 and we're going to do 1 for our A, 3 for our B, and 5 for our C. Equal. And the answer is expressed that way. So negative 3 halves plus square root 11 over 2i. I like that the Casio gives an exact answer like that. Most calculators give a decimal. If I hit the down arrow, down arrow, I get my other result. And let's do the same thing on the EX. If you go in here, you can either use the, the uh, arrow keys or you can just go directly to it by hitting alpha A. Hit equal. 
We're doing a polynomial. It is degree 2. It's a quadratic. Notice this calculator scoots around. It's because it's not flat, like I complained about earlier. So 1 for A, 3 for B, 5 for C. Get our, hit equal again, get our answer. This is, EX is a little more in alignment with how it would be if you just did the quadratic equation by hand. But either of them is fine, and typically that doesn't throw anyone for a loop. Next I want to show if you're doing conversions on these calculators. The EX is nice because when you go into the conversions menu, they're listed topically. So let's say we're doing length, we're just going to one, and then we pick from the list. And granted, it's a pretty small font, but it's nice because they can pack it in there. And so you can simply select which of those you would like to do. Okay, on the ES, when you go into conversions, you have to know which type of conversion you're doing. So in this case, you have to use the cover. And you look at the cover and you find out, well, which one is it? So let's say I was doing feet to meters. I would type in 0, 3. And then you would type in, well, how many feet? You hit the back arrow, type in how many feet, let's say 15 feet, and it gives you the number of meters. That's fine, but that's pretty inferior, or that is inferior to the EX where it's this built-in menu system. Okay, so we looked at the ES and the EX, and I've pointed out some of the differences. Again, this is the second edition of the 115 ES Plus. And interestingly enough, it has a variety of features that the EX does not offer even though the EX is the much or significantly more powerful in terms of processor. The fact that they offer both of these is also puzzling to me. I'm not sure why they offer two calculators that are so similar or why they would not have given the EX these extra features that the ES offers. That's, that's confusing to me especially when you consider that they sell for very similar prices. So my hunch is that there's tests out there or something along those lines where they don't let you use the EX but they do let you use the ES or vice versa. I'm not sure. There's some marketing decision being made. So anyway, hope this has been helpful and appreciate you watching it. Later.